One of the best ways to learn about Nashville history is stepping back in time here at the Natchez Trace Parkway. The Natchez Trace Parkway runs 444 miles from Nashville, Tennessee, all the way down to Natchez, Mississippi. It goes through three states, Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi. The Natchez Trace Parkway wasn't always this beautifully paved road. It was used by different Native American tribes found throughout the Southeast United States as a primary travel route for hunting and trading. In 1801, Thomas Jefferson designated the Natchez Trace Parkway as a national postal road in between Nashville, Tennessee and Natchez, Mississippi. After the Natchez Trace Parkway became a postal road, many people throughout the Southeast United States would travel up and down this parkway looking for work, such as blacksmiths and mills and so forth. Some famous travelers of the Natchez Trace Parkway include Andrew Jackson, Ulysses S. Grant, and Mayweather Lewis. Mayweather Lewis was part of the Lewis and Clark expedition. The Natchez Trace became a parkway operated by the National Park Service in 1938. This road is one of the most traveled roads in the United States. Every year, the Natchez Trace Parkway is traveled by more than 15 million people. If you were to take this road all the way into Nashville, you end up in West Nashville near Loveless Cafe, one of the best breakfast locations in the city of Nashville. In 1766, there was a French fur trader who was traveling through this area from Quebec, and his name was Timothy de Mumbrian. While traveling through this area, he noticed this area near downtown Nashville called the French Lick. The French Lick was home to a large herd of bison and many deer. So Timothy de Mumbrian decided to make a home here in Nashville. He's considered Nashville's first resident. He decided to live in a cave down by the Cumberland River for seven months, and Nashville became his permanent at home in the early 1800s. Timothy used Nashville as a trading post. He traded goods and fur, and this was his central location between his New Orleans trading post and his northern trading post. There's many things named after Timothy DeMumbrian here in Nashville. The street right beside me is called DeMumbrian Street, and the neighborhood I'm currently standing in is called DeMumbrian Hill. There's also a bed and breakfast in Berry Hill called Timothy DeMumbrian House. You may be on Google Maps and it pronounces it Demon Bruin, but it's actually de Mumbrian. Right behind me is the third replica of Fort Nash Borough. Fort Nash Borough was originally established on top of the hill near the current courthouse. In 1779, Fort Nash Borough was established. It's named after a Revolutionary War general named Francis Nash. Both John Donaldson and James Robertson served underneath his leadership in the Revolutionary War. In 1806, the state of Tennessee recognized Nash Borough as a city and changed its name to Nashville. In the early 19th century, Nashville started to receive a lot of attention from travelers traveling east to west. Also in the early 1800s, the state of Tennessee was trying to find its identity. The Tennessee state capital moved around the state a few times and finally settled in Nashville in 1843. Right behind me is the beautiful Tennessee state capital that started construction in 1845 and finished in 1859. Let's go back in time a little bit to the early 1820s. We had a citizen of Nashville, Andrew Jackson, run for president of the United States. If you want to learn more about the life and presidency of Andrew Jackson, you can visit his home in Hermitage, Tennessee. James K. Polk and his wife Sarah are also buried here on the Tennessee State Capitol grounds. He actually died a few months after his presidency. He was president from 1845 to 1849, and he was the 11th president of the United States. During his presidency, he was known for acquiring a lot of land throughout the United States. His body has been moved several times since his passing, and the local controversy now is his family down in Columbia, Tennessee want to move James K. Polk and his wife Sarah back down to Columbia, Tennessee. In the 1850s, Nashville became the hub of the Southeast for major train companies. One of the major companies was the Louisville-Nashville train line. Due to the number of train lines coming into the city of Nashville, there was a lot of storehouses and warehouses built for commerce here in the Southeast United States. All of these train lines were a major factor for the development after the Civil War for the city of Nashville. The train lines became a contributing factor to the growth of Nashville due to the amount of cargo and passengers traveling through the city. 
Nashville was one of the most significant cities during the Civil War. And the reason for that is because of the train lines and the infrastructure that the city had. The city of Nashville fell to the Union Army in 1862, and they built this fort right behind me called Fort Nagley. This was the primary defense line for the city of Nashville. There were different lines of defense throughout the city of Nashville, but this was the main fort. During the Civil War, you had three significant battles here in Middle Tennessee. You had the Battle of Stones River, you had the Battle of Franklin, then you also have the Battle of Nashville. To learn more about Fort Nagley, check out the video in our description. The beautiful building behind me is called the Parthenon. The Parthenon is a full-scale replica of the Parthenon from Athens, Greece. And you may be wondering to yourself, why in the world is the Parthenon here in Nashville? The reason is in the late 1800s, in 1897, we had a centennial exposition, which was to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the state of Tennessee. The state of Tennessee became the 16th state in 1896, but we were a year late because we were drinking a little bit too much whiskey. So we celebrated our 100th anniversary in 1897 and they shut this entire park down and they built different world wonders at this park you can learn all about those world wonders and how this park was built by visiting the museum inside of the parthenon during that time over two million people from around the world came and visited nashville Right behind me is one of the most historic hotels found in the state of Tennessee. This is the Hermitage Hotel. It's played a very important role in the women's suffrage movement in the early 1900s. Both the parties that were for and against the passing of the 19th Amendment had their headquarters stationed in this hotel. Tennessee played a significant role in the ratification of the 19th Amendment. The state of Tennessee was the 36th state to say yes to the 19th Amendment, allowing the right for women to vote. I'm standing at the corner of 3rd and Union, and in the late 1800s, this area was known as the Financial District of Downtown Nashville. These banks behind me played a significant role in the growth of Downtown Nashville and the Financial District here. When they were transporting gold in the early 1900s, they would either use the tunnels underneath us or the roads behind me to get the gold into downtown. During the 1930s and 1940s, the city of Nashville gained the nickname Wall Street of the South, and that's due to all of the banks moving from the north into the south. Also during that time, the population grew by 100,000 people. The primary nickname for the city of Nashville is Music City, and there's two reasons for that. The first being the Fisk Jubilee Singers were over in England in the late 1800s singing for Queen Victoria. It is rumored that Queen Victoria wrote in her diary, they must come from a music city. The city of Nashville is also home to the longest running radio show in the world, and that's the Grand Old Opry. The Grand Old Opry played a very significant role here in the city of Nashville, and right behind me is the Ryman Auditorium. This was the fifth home of the Grand Old Opry for over 30 years. One of the broadcasters for the Grand Old Opry would start his show saying live from Music City, and that's when the nickname was set in stone. In the late 1960s, the city of Nashville experienced a health care boom because of the passing of Medicaid and Medicare. In 1969, Hospital Corporation of America, aka HCA, became one of the first publicly traded health care companies in the United States. That's when Nashville started to see a rise of health care companies starting here in the city or coming to Nashville. Right behind me is one of HCA's main locations that you can find here in the Capitol View neighborhood. As of 2021, more than 500 health care companies called Nashville home. Right behind me is Woolworth on 5th. Woolworth is essential in telling the story of the Nashville Civil Rights Movement that happened in the 1960s. On February 13th, 1960, 124 students from Nashville's historically black colleges and universities walked into Woolworth's, Cress's, and McClellan's, sat down at the lunch counters, and asked to be served to no avail. The students also targeted Walgreens, W.T. Grant, as well as Harvey's and Kane Sloan department stores. Their goal was to desegregate Nashville lunch counters. The student protest Protesters experienced no violence until February 27th. On that day at Woolworths and McClellan's, white resistors threw the students from their seats, punched, kicked, and spat upon them. Nashville police only arrested the student protesters. 81 students were arrested and charged with loitering and disorderly conduct. Two days later, the court fined each student $50. They took a principal stand, refused to pay the bail, and spent 33 and one-third days in jail. On May 10th, 1960, Nashville became the first major city to be in desegregating its public facilities when six downtown stores led by Harvey's and Kane Sloan opened their lunch counters to African Americans. If you want to learn more about the civil rights movement that happened here in the city of Nashville, make sure to visit the Nashville Public Library just a few blocks away.
I'm standing at one of the furthest points away from downtown Nashville. Right behind me is the county line that separates Davidson and Williamson counties. In 1963, the city of Nashville was one of the first in the United States to merge its city and county government to become metropolitan Nashville. In the early 1990s, Nashville started to experience some growth. You have the construction of the Batman building or AT&T building in downtown Nashville. Also in the mid 90s, you had the construction of Bridgestone Arena, home of the Nashville Predators. And you also have the home of the Tennessee Titans, currently known as Nissan Stadium being built in the mid 90s. During this time, you start seeing a lot of transformation in downtown Nashville. You have skyscrapers and residential buildings being built. In addition, you also have parks and green spaces coming into downtown Nashville. Right behind me is a neighborhood in downtown Nashville called Sobro. Sobro means south of Broadway. The first skyscraper developed in the Sobro neighborhood was the Pinnacle Building. If you look past the construction of the Four Seasons Hotel, it's that skyscraper right behind that construction site. The Pinnacle Building was completed in 2010. Let's fast forward a few years to 2013. You have the completion of the Music City Center. The Music City Center is our conference and convention center in downtown Nashville. Because of the influence of the Music City Center, we have seen exponential growth in the Sobro neighborhood. The tremendous growth of Nashville has caused a large number of hotels to be built in the Sobro neighborhood and the Nashville region as a whole. In 2015, the city of Nashville was named the It City by the New York Times. They named it the It City because of the increasing number of people visiting the city of Nashville and the changes to the infrastructure. Another contributing factor for the growth of Nashville from 2010 to 2020 is the number of corporations moving their headquarters into downtown Nashville. Some notable companies include Amazon, Alliance and Bernstein, iHeartMedia, and Bridgestone America. Because of Nashville's success during this decade, the Nashville Soccer Club became a professional team with the MLS. They played their first game in the beginning of 2020 at Nissan Stadium. The Nashville Sounds moved their stadium from Wedgwood, Houston into the Germantown neighborhood. We also saw the completion of Ascend Amphitheater, which is a permanent outdoor music venue located in downtown Nashville. I'm standing on the historic 2nd Avenue in downtown Nashville. Right behind me is a telling representation of the year 2020 for Nashville. 2020 was a catastrophic year for the city of Nashville. On March 3rd, 2020, there was an F3 tornado that started in West Nashville and went all the way to Cookville, Tennessee. The tornado destroyed many businesses and homes throughout North Nashville, Germantown, East Nashville, Donaldson, and Hermitage. The tornado also took the lives of two Nashvilleans. In the middle of March, the coronavirus pandemic affected the city of Nashville. Many businesses were closed due to the lockdowns and restrictions placed on them, and four 476 Nashvilleans lost their life due to COVID-19 in 2020. During 2020, Second Avenue experienced two different tragedies. The first was toward the end of May when rioters walked down Second Avenue, looted and destroyed many businesses. Also on Christmas Day of 2020, a bomb destroyed most of the city block behind me. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about Nashville's incredible history and how this city came to be what it is. I wonder what's in store for Nashville's future. Maybe it's this big development behind me. I'm Stuart Deming of Explore.Nash. Make sure to go follow us on Instagram at XPLR.Nash. If you want to learn more about Nashville in person, come take a tour with us. Thank you for exploring with us.